As a quick aside on last video, you may have noticed in the sidebar here a warning, arrow function should not return assignment. Uh, this is ESLint in action, you can see that arrow function should not return assignment is showed in our terminal window as well. This is the implicit syntax that actually returns this. And to avoid that, because we don't want to actually return the value, we just assign it, we can wrap this in its own set of curly braces, like this. And this should make the error go away. Here we go. So let's talk about state a little bit here. As we've seen in React before, we can pass data through props. Here we have our index that passes the data into our app component via a prop. And then inside app, this data is passed to the name list component via props. You cannot modify props directly. They are in a sense immutable. They're just a way to pass information and data down the component tree. First of all, what is state? State is anything that represents the current status of the UI as the user interacts. For example, if a user clicks on a name, you want to add it to that shortlist, that would be state. The value of the input field is also state. In React, while technically any component can handle its own state, the idea is you want to manage the state in the highest level, the parent most component implicated in that state in question. In our case, we want to have one piece of state, which is the current value in the input filter. This is not affecting just the input search, the search component though. We want to filter out this names list component with that value, so it needs to access that state as well. Both the search and the name list component needed, and what is the common parent component that these two have while we're in it, this is the app. So in that case, we are going to have our state living in our app component, so it can be passed down to the search component and the nameless component. Let's create a piece of state here. ES6 classes can have a constructor, constructor, and we pass props inside of it. Inside uh, that constructor, we want to call super and pass props as well. So the way we add state to our app component is we have this, that state, and we'll assign an object with a filter text string, which is defaulting to empty. So for now, nothing incredible. We just have an empty filter text property. If we want to pass that state to our other component, you guessed it, we passed it as a prop. So we want a search filter to have a filter text. And this could be anything. It could be hello equals as long as you pass this, that state, this time, not this props, this, that state, that filter text. So this, that state, that filter text will take the state and look for the filter text. It's a good idea whenever you can to have the same property name than the actual state name, to have a naming convention that kind of makes sense. It's going to be easier to reason about as your application grows. So as a little test, let's have that filter text to default to hello, save that. And now inside our search component, I will try in my red method to console.log filter text value and this dot props dot filter text which again accesses the filter text property, this that props that filter text. I actually called filter text. So I want to pass filter text. And you can see here the value hello. So what we want to do now is in our search, whenever the user types something, we want instead of just logging the value, what we want to do is to update the state. We want to go ahead and update this value to whatever was typed in the field. Because ultimately, the filter text value should be what is here in the input. We cannot 
in React from the child component. In this, in this instance, search is the child component and app is the parent. We cannot just from here uh, update state with like something like this, that state, or this, that set state to update the component. What we need to do is we need to pass somehow the value of this input field back to the parent component and then in the parent component we want to update our state. So from the parent component I will create another method which I'll call filter update and we will pass a value. This value will come from the child component and the way you update state in React is this that set state and inside of that, you can pass the properties that you want to change. We want to set filter text. And I'm typed it wrong again, filter text. And we want to assign the value to it. So whenever we find a way to call this filter update method with the value passed, the value will be assigned instead of hello. How could we actually call that from the child component? Well, you may have guessed it, we will have to pass this method as a prop as well. I'll put that on the second line. And um, filter update is the name of our prop. And it's this dot filter update bind this. So now we have a way inside our search component to call this method from the child component. Let's give it a save. And in our search, we'll try to send our value back to the parent component. Here, we are storing the value of the input field, which is exactly what we want. How about we try to call this that props that filter update. And this one has nothing to do with this one, but this one is referring to this prop, that filter update. It's actually calling this property. And inside of there, we want to pass val, which is the value. So now every time we type something, every time the input field changes, this value is updated with latest value. And then we're sending that value to the parent component with the filter update method. Let's give it a save. Just to verify this, I will console.log here. Filter text state from parent component. So we know it's actually this one that's rendering. We want to pass this, that state, that filter text. Let's give it a try. Hello. Look at this. Filter state from parent component. I'll quickly go ahead and delete this other one. And now you can see that every time we type something, our state is updated. This is exactly what we want. The state is maintained in the parent app component, but the actual value is coming from the child component, sent back through a callback to the parent component, which means now we can access here. And I'll just I'll just make a quick demo to show that. If I go in my app and I want now in my names list access this value, I will pass it as filter text property. This, that state, that filter text. I think you start to get the idea. And now I can go in my names list component. I'll just wrap this in the div. And now I'll just have a paragraph here that says filter text value is and I will pass the prop which is sent to that component this that props filter text and you should now see our value that defaults to hello because it's set in our app to default to hello and now when I start typing this value should update. Beautiful. We can access it in all the components, but it's actually only maintained in one single place, 
which is the parent app component. Great. Let's remove that, give it a save, and we'll continue in the next video. Thank you.